welcome to Convent Avenue Baptist Church Sunday School. The lesson today is Offering Hope for the Future. Our teachers today is Annette Barden and Mildred Green. Giving thanks to our pastor, Reverend Jesse T. Williams, Reverend Charlene Faison, Minister of Christian uh, Minister of Christian Education, Deacon Willard Tolson, Supervisor of Sunday School, and Ronald Smith, Superintendent of Sunday School. Today is Mother's Day. Giving praises to all mothers today. Amen. Special mentioning to our First Lady, Geraldine Williams, and our Class A1 Sunday School mother, Louise Felder. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your, uh, thank you for infinite love, your infinite love on this day set aside to honor mothers. We thank you for the gift of Christian mothers. Bless them always, give them grace, to set a good example for their families. Hold your protecting hand over them. We thank you for their love. Above all things, we thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, which guide our footsteps, who set an example by the love that he had for his mother. Yes, to our prayer, amen. Amen. Last week's lesson was about speaking the truth to power. It illustrates the timeless struggle to relate to the truth properly. Do a King uh, Ahab, due to his idolatry and miscarriage of justice, an antipathy toward God's prophet Micaiah, willfully in rebellion to truth. He accepted the words of his false prophets. Jehoshaphat desired to please God, but lacked consistent, faithful to follow through. We ourselves are hesitant at times, and we, we are led by others. Prophet Micaiah, ability to think and speak independently in the face of the hostile crowd of 400 false prophets and two powerful leaders, and in a climate of wickedness was still obedient to God. We must echo Apostle Paul's words, let God be true, let God be found true through every, the, uh, through every human being is false and a liar. Isaiah is one of the most significant of Old Testament books. Isaiah spoke to Judah during the critical years of the Assyrian expansion when the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed. Offering hope for the future, Isaiah 29, 13 to 24, Mildred Green will read the background. Thanks. Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets of his time, Isaiah had a vision of God and was called by God to do God's work, bringing his nation to repentance to save them from a whirlpool of destruction. His very name means Yahweh is the source of salvation. Isaiah came to the people with the message of judgment tempered with hope. He ministered for 60 years or more and profit during the range of five kings. Uzziah, Johav, Ahab, Zechariah, I'm sorry, Hezekiah, and Monessa. 
for 60 years, Isaiah served as a prophet of Judah. He stood as the voice of God amidst the people of disobedience. And his message was to call them back to God. At the start of Isaiah's divine appointment, Judah experienced military and financial strength. As a result, the elite disregard God's command, especially in their treatment of the poor, the widow, and the orphan, as well as their arrogance. Then neighboring Assyria grew in political and military power. Rather than turning to God for their salvation of refuge, Judah governing leaders looked to the surrounding nation for safety, which was an insult to God. Isaiah 29 opened with the prophet making a sorrowful declaration upon Jerusalem using alias Ariel, which mean lion of God. Isaiah predicted how God would deal with Jerusalem disobedience. The holy city would, un would be under siege and in mourning because of the common distress at the hand of their enemies as punishment for their idolatry and self-centeredness. But the message also focused that after enduring punishment, he will also handle those enemies who will rise against his chosen people. The author also asks a question at the end. Have you experienced time when you thought God help wasn't needed? I'm telling you. Yeah. Have you experienced those kind of times when mm -hmm. you think I got this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I and I'm always wrong too. <laughs> Ask you me, and all the rest of times, us. <laughs> let me say, most times I'm wrong. <laughs> most times. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, mm -hmm. and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Mm -hmm. We are all in this together. No one is exempt, Ned. No one is Come exempt. On. You know, sometime in just a hot minute, mm -hmm. something happened and your mouth start running like a river, a flowing river. And by the time you close your mouth and blink your eye and say, Oh Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Happens all the time. Only take a minute. That's it, that's it. Okay. But therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have attained access. I like that word, access, to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Now we're going to read verse 13 through 16. Let us read it together. Verses 13 through 16. And so the Lord says, 
these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And they worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Because of this, I will once again astound those hypocrites with amazing wonders. The wisdom of the wise will pass away and the intelligence of the intelligent will disappear. What sorrow awaits those who try to hide their plans from the Lord? Who do their evil deeds in the dark? The Lord can't see us, they say. He doesn't know what's going on. How foolish can you be? He is the potter, and he is certainly greater than you, the clay. Should the created thing say of the one who made it, he didn't make me, does a jaw ever say the potter who made me is stupid? False profession of faith. What was God's accusation against Judah? A lot of people, the Lord is not impressed with outward actions that are meant to please others instead of him. Our lesson begins with Isaiah telling the people what God thought of hypocritical worship and then continues with the prophet revealing what they could ex expect based on upon how they responded to the Lord. Mm -hmm. God looked into the heart of the Israelites. He looked into the heart of the Israelites worship and found their hearts was far from him. Amen. Instead of worshiping the Lord out of love for him, they just mm -hmm. went through the ritual of worship. The people All were through the motion. That's it. The people were of religious blindness and of traditions. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people, 8, Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 9. They worship me in vain. And their teachings are but rules taught by men. Mm -hmm. How did Judah insult the Lord? They sinned and they thought no one could hear, uh, see them, not even God. That's in verses 15 and 16. Woe is for those who think that the dark uh, deeds are hidden from the Lord. That's Matthew 18, 7 and Luke 6, 25. Woe to the world because of these things that cause people to sin. 25. Woe to you who are well fed now, but you will go hungry. Those who think themselves as intelligent, Think they can conceal their sinful uh, plans from God. They turn God's authority structure up, upside down. They think themselves as the potter, mm -hmm. as if they were in charge. Amen. The potter's clay has no right to command the potter. No, he can. No, he can. Now we're going to read uh, 17, verses 17 to 21. 17 to 21. Let's read it together. Soon it will not be very long. The forest of Lebanon will become a fertile field. And the fertile field will yield bountiful crops. In that day, the death will hear words read from a book, and the blind would see through the gloom of the darkness. The humble will be filled with fresh joy from the Lord. 
the poor will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The scoffer will be gone, the arrogant will disappear, and those who plot evil will be killed. Those who convict the innocent by their false testimony will disappear. A similar fate awaits those who use trickery to pervert justice and who tell lies to destroy the innocent. Mm -hmm. Future prospect for justice. Despite God's description of doom and gloom, he promised that he would restore them to prosperity. Isaiah noted that the moral change in the Jewish nation would be great and that the deaf would hear and the blind would see. God's promise was not only physical promise, but most importantly, it was a spiritual promise that once again, the humble and the needy would be filled with joy, mm -hmm. the Lord God. And that's Matthew 5, 3 and 11, 6. 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 11, 6, blessed is the man who does not fall away on the account of me. I tell you, I tell you. Tell you. Okay. The meek that is humble and the lowly and the poor in spirit. And then you have the, the destitute. You know, the people who have much should share. Their, their, their benefits, all their benefits come from God. And so why aren't they sharing it? Because God favored them and they should share it with them, even with others. That's a need. Mm. What do you think about that? You know, uh, it's called greed, Nat. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very much greed. And we see yeah. a lot, we see a lot of that. Yes. We see a lot of that. Remember, uh, I'm thinking of uh, uh President 45. How he gave the big, uh, 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 he, he made the, the rich richer by uh, cutting back uh, 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 what they had, you know, their taxes and stuff. We have today, how many millionaires? Bill, not millionaires, billionaires. I wrote that down somewhere. I think it's 788 billionaires. To be a millionaire now is nothing. It's, you know, I mean, I I could use it, <laughs> but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for God's blessings. Anyway, now we're going to read verses 22 to 24. Well, Ned, I would like to say something about that too. Okay, yes. Okay, uh, looking at um, how God makes provision for everybody. That's right. When we look at um, uh, 17 to 20, 21, right. and, and, and referring it to uh, fertilization. Oh yeah. Adam, yeah. Adam was the uh, first farmer in the Bible. Mm -hmm. first man to farm. Mm -hmm. um, if you could just imagine if he could have heard Isaiah uh, prophesying of what will happen in Lebanon mm -hmm. and the fields will be fertile. Mm -hmm. uh, how the whole, how um, you would wonder how this could be. Okay. God always speak to people in a way that they can understand. And he was speaking to the people in those days because 
Most of them were farmers, hunters and gathering. So that's, that's what they understood. Right. They understood that if the land was fertile, they would, they would progress. Right. But he was, looking, he was talking about the heart of man. Mm -hmm. what, was, what was in their heart? What is in the heart of people now that are billionaires? In a lot of people hearts that are billionaires, they are sharing mm -hmm. and a lot of people are not. But um, God has continued to make provision. Right. And, and when, when you look at it from the days of Isaiah, and when you look at it from the in our time or in the future, mm -hmm. we're going to use different words to describe the moving of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And thank God that the moving of the Holy Spirit is moving on all the continents right. and and they're moving on fertile soil that was so dry mm -hmm. that you would say how could how could any kind of productivity comes from here come from here but god has also put wisdom in the heart of man he have he have put knowledge in the heart of man. God have always used people. Yes. And and he is using people to connect with each other around the world, mm -hmm. around the globe. The word is being the word is going forth in a very powerful way. Right. We think Christianity is dying. Mm -hmm. No, Christianity is shifting. Mm -hmm. Where at one time in some countries, especially Africa, you could be arrested if you were carrying a Bible or in Asia. Now in uh, in uh, Africa, there on the continent, there is 685 million Christians. In Asia, uh, the Christianity is growing on that continent. And it's because people are hearing the word of God and they're feeding it abroad. Right, right. They are, they are passing the word, and we have all uh, we have so many different forms now that we can use that we're privy to technology, mm -hmm. a source that we're using ourselves today. Can you imagine if we didn't have technology, we wouldn't be able to reach the masses that we're reaching. Today, yeah, they are. Well, yeah, things are changing. Yes. Yes. Things are changing. Yes, they are. And we thank God for it. We no, thank no. God for the benefit and we thank God for the gift of it. Okay. okay. And the next, we, we, we're going to be reading verses 22 to 24. Let's read it together. That is why the Lord redeemed Abraham, that to the people of Israel, my people will no longer be ashamed to turn tail with fear. For when they see their many children and all the blessings I have given them, they will recognize the holiness of the Holy One of Israel. They will stand in awe of the God of Jacob. Then the wayward would gain understanding and the complainers will accept instruction. 
Oh my. Faithful yes. promise of hope. This is faithful yes. promise of hope. Of hope. Hope. Isaiah begins this section. The Lord redeemed Abraham from his pagan uh, background, bringing him into the land of Canaan and promised Israel's descendants that would no longer live in shame and in sadness. True justice would prevail. Jacob's descendants would no longer be ashamed. They uh, no longer be in fear or dread anymore. I, I pulled up something in uh, Genesis 12, one and two when uh, it says uh, God asked uh, Abraham to leave his country. And he says, I will make you into a great nation. Great nation. Amen. A great nation. Yeah. He did. Yes, a he great did. nation. Right. Therefore, based on the fact that Israel and Judah shall no uh, more be ashamed or fear their enemies, Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. And then I picked up uh, uh, Isaiah 45, 17, and, uh, and Isaiah 57, and Isaiah 54, 4, 45, 17. But Israel will be saved by the Lord, 57, because the sovereign Lord helps me and I will not be disgraced. 54.4, do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widow. When all this is accomplished, they will experience visible change among uh, themselves and their offspring. The house of Jacob will see God's handiwork Amen. in their children and, and their attitude towards God will change. Yes. Question. How does God, how does this give God's people hope for the future? These truths give us hope because God can upend our expectations and turn even bad things to good by his power and grace. Our loving God is Amen. more than able to turn things around and bring us back to him. Oh, Mildred. Yes. How, how does God give how does God give us hope for the future? Do you have an answer for that? How well, does... now we see how why we were chasing. Mm -hmm. They understand better about the loyalty that must have to God, the loyalty that they have to have to God. Oh, right. they learn more about God's ways mm -hmm. and they stop murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. The growth of these Israelites was that their understanding mm -hmm. in their spirit improved. Mm -hmm. You know, that heart has to change. Right, that right. heart has to grow. Mm -hmm. And 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 the more that grows, the more you grows. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And also, well, we must realize that we're not exempt from mm -hmm. punishment from God. Right. Just because we have professed faith in Him, mm -hmm. we must live like Christian every day yes, to yes, please yes. Him. We have to every day grow oh yeah and 
That's right. That's right. Okay. The next thing we, I guess, a couple of questions and discuss the meaning. And said, the first question is, how can we examine the sincerity of our private worship and watch out for the hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy of our public worship? The way back now is the same as it was in uh, Isaiah's day. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of our, yeah, our, sweet, our spiritual zeal, we need to be to live mindful. Yeah, God is in charge, and He judges each one of us justly. He's a just God, and He sees our true spiritual condition. Amen. And in our spiritual condition, I picked up from Psalm one six. For the Lord knows and fully approves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Amen. Keeping God's name holy, you cannot add to God's holiness. Worship him in awe and with deep respect and love. You need to copy your off of Jesus to mimic him. And, and being in service to others, we need to be able to help others that that's in need, you know. Yeah. We need to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you want to add something on to that? And like helping others? I know you do it. I know you help others. You help well, <laughs> we all We all help others. Right, right. In our teaching, in our everyday living. Yeah in our everyday living mm -hmm. uh you know it's like we say the precept of man i believe is to it, it is to do god's will and to to worship him and not to go through the motion right, right. but have a real commitment oh um, yeah i think that's the first thing to, yeah. is just having a real commitment mm -hmm. to him right yeah and, and there's another question. And we don't have to be ashamed of it. No, you no. Know? Uh, the second question is, what are the themes of hope in the verses 17 to 24 that connect with your faith to trust God in every situation? I know that Mildred was talking about the fertile fields of Lebanon and in the forest. We'd be turned into a fruitful field. God knows God will cut down one and he will build up another. And, and that's in the uh, scene in verse 18. He, he uh, you know, we got to support the reversal of, you know, he, he supports the, the reversal of people's conditions. Okay. Um, the prophecy has both immediate and futuristic, futuristic interpretations referring to the coming messianic age messianic age when things would be different this tends to suggest that a change would come a change would come the wicked will be transformed and the devout worshipers will increase within there's going to be more yes pure and true worship of god will replace the the uh, hypocrisy. God's words are accessible to everyone. The deaf will hear, the blind will see, and the oppressed will rejoice how God acts in their behalf. God the Father, through the complete work of Christ, and the present indwelling spirit of the Holy Spirit is able and willing to free us. Amen. To see, so we can love him with all our hearts and soul and abilities. I'm looking forward for that restoration 
and joy and the grace and the salvation that's given to me for, for, for free and, and joining him and seeing his face. I'm going to, I'm going to pursue him daily. I'm going to read the word, study his word and thanking him for giving me the wisdom and the comprehension and, 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 the, and I'm going to put my trust and hope in him. All my trust is going to my savior, Jesus Christ. All my trust. And with this, Mill, did you have anything to add on? All of our trust, Ned, all of our trust, all of our hope mm -hmm. to make a real commitment. I mean, that's right. Okay. Father, look, we're capable of straying from you. May our worship and service to you never find us lacking in devotion. Renew our hearts today so that the unbelievers can see Christ in us. Let them see our see through what and see the good things that we're trying to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, God is able to renew our hearts. He can, He's going to change us. He's going to change us. Amen.